Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. My advice to the young people, 25 years old, make enough mistakes. Don't worry. You fall, you stand up. You fall, you step. Enjoy it. I mean, 25 years old, enjoy the show, enjoy the show. Why is it so important to get up early? We don't sleep when we're tired, we sleep when we are tired. Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up. Take responsibility to make your life happen. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. But I can guarantee you, you will never achieve anything greater than your highest aspiration. When you have something to do, when you have someone to love, when you have something to look forward to, when you get up in the morning, See, people who have something to look forward to don't need an alarm clock because they have a reason for being. You, if you want to have one of the best lives in the world, which is you live on your terms, you have to pay your dues to get there. There are key components and key ingredients in the recipe of a student mentality. The future is very expensive and only those who are carriers of discipline can inherit the future. I need you to stay motivated. I don't care if you have to listen to me a thousand times, I need you to stay motivated. And I need that motivation to mature into discipline. If you're wasting 20 hours a week, you're wasting $50,000 a year. And you are doing that right now. And it's because you're young, wasting $50,000 a year is a way bigger catastrophe than it would be for me to waste it because I'm not gonna last nearly as long. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stopped wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? You'd be, who knows how much more efficient? 10 times more efficient, 20 times more efficient. You have no idea how efficient, efficient people get. It's completely, it's off the charts. If you would, if you would get off the couch, stop playing video games, stop murmuring, stop complaining, you're about to go to a whole other level in every area of your life. The world needs you, and I wish you every success. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me, I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you'll never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money, because I got it in here. So if you want to make six figures, you can't just be talking about you want to make six figures. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You got to be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you got to want it. You got to go days without, listen to me, you got to want to be successful so bad that you forget to eat. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in free season. I'm going to say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal, some work harder in free season. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA, and even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meet with you, you say, I don't want to talk to your TA. I don't pay the TA. I pay you to teach me. 
So you're gonna have to find some time to meet me. If I gotta meet you at the mall, if I gotta meet you at your house, you are going to see me. Listen to me, all men are created equal. Some work hard in preseason. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. That's number one. Watch number two. Number two, catch number two. I wrote it down. I wanted to make sure you got it. It says, to be, watch this, watch this. We're talking about sacrifice now. The important thing is this. You're right in why I'm saying it. Because I only have about three more minutes. Listen to me. The most important thing is this. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. Why is it so important to get up early? Some of y'all don't want it. That's why you ain't got it. I don't sleep when I'm tired. I sleep when I'm done. The average millionaire wakes up at 4 a.m. So it started off 4 o'clock in the morning where I'd start and I'd start with my cardio, then I'd have breakfast, and then I would go to the gym, and then I'd go to work. Some of y'all have no idea what 4 a.m. looks like. Why would you not wake up at 4.30? because you're too busy sleeping in. I'm pretty sure I wake up earlier than all of you. We don't sleep when we're tired, we sleep when we are uh -huh. Too busy hitting the snooze button multiple times. Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up. And if we can really be honest, some of y'all don't even go to bed until about 4 a.m. If you can get up before the rest of the world is awake, right? Before the enemy's awake, you can get so much done. You're so much more productive. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Wake your ass up. And then they ask me, well, why are you up so early? <laughs> <laughs> Take responsibility to make your life happen. Awaken the beast inside. Wake up at 4 a.m. So I begin to tell myself, there must be a reason. When you have something to do, when you have someone to love, when you have something to look forward to, when you get up in the morning, see people who have something to look forward to don't need an alarm clock because they have a reason for being. You, if you want to have one of the best lives in the world, which is you live on your terms, you have to pay your dues to get there. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. You got a problem with your life. You got a problem with your environment. Do something about it. If you want more freedom in your life, you have to have more discipline. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. I wouldn't say I'm fearless. In fact, I, I think I, fear, I feel fear quite strongly. Uh, but I, um, if, the, if, if what we're doing is, if what, you know, what I'm doing is, I think is important enough, then I just uh, override the fear. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not as though I don't feel, I feel like more strongly than I would like. I think also people tend to overweight risk um, on a personal level. It's one thing if you've got, you know, a mortgage to pay and kids to support and that if you were to deviate from your job that, well, how are you going to feed your family and pay the rent and, okay, that's understandable. But let's say you're young and you're just coming out of college or coming out of high school or whatever, the, what, what, do, you, what do you risk? You know, you're not going to stop. I mean, right. it's it's really certainly not in any kind of modern economy. It's, it's so easy to earn enough money just to live somewhere and eat food. I don't know what, you know, what are they what are they afraid of? They're, they're mostly afraid of uh, failure, I think. People should be, be less risk averse when 
there's not much at risk. What is education? Like you're basically downloading data and algorithms into your brain. And it's, it's, it's actually amazingly bad in conventional education. Cause like it shouldn't be like this huge chore. Like the more you can gamify the, uh, the process of learning, the better. I was at sort of a slight existential crisis because I was trying to figure out what, what does it all mean? Like what's the purpose of things? And um, I came to the conclusion that if, if we can advance the, 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 the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened and, and that's really the only way forward. What drives you? What, what is it that when you wake up in the morning, do you see a problem and you want to solve it? Yeah. Uh. The thing that uh, drives me is that uh, I want to be able to think about the future and uh, you know, feel good about that. Um, so uh, that uh, you know, we're doing what we can to uh, have the future be, be as good as possible. Um, to be inspired by what is likely to happen um, and to look forward to the next day. Um, so that's, that's what really, really drives me, is, is, is trying to figure out uh, how, do we, how do we make sure that things are great and um, I'm going to be so and um, that's the underlying principle behind uh, Tesla and SpaceX um, is that um, I think it's, it's, it's pretty important that we accelerate the transition to uh, sustainable generation and consumption of energy. Um, it, it's inevitable, but it's, it matters if, we ha if it happens sooner or, or later. Um, and then SpaceX is about um, helping make life multiplanetary. Um, and doing what we can to continue the, the dream of Apollo um, and um, ultimately make a contribution to life becoming multiplanetary. Well, let's talk a little more about that. I think uh, everyone very interested in that when you say making life multiplanetary. Yeah. That's exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so what's I mean, your vision there? You know, um, I think, you know, particularly for uh, Americans, you know, like you think about America is a nation of explorers. Uh, people came here from other parts of the world. They, you know, uh, chose to give up the known in favor of the unknown. Um, so I think uh, exploration, like <clears throat> I think the United States is a, is a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. Um, and uh, so that's why it, it appeals to Americans so much. You know, um, you can see this when, say there was a shuttle tragedy um, and seven people died, and that's that's terrible. But you know, a lot of people die all the time. Um, but, but why do we care so much? Because it was the dream of exploration that was dying, uh, along with those people. That's why. Your parents probably told you you can be anything you want, but you can't. That's horse. <laughs> you can't. If it's all juxtaposed. So, but what you tell them is that you can do anything you want that you have passion for because that eliminates most of the crap because most people don't follow their dream. You know, like they say in The Sound of Music, you can't have a dream come true unless you have a dream. Now, I still dream. I dream in Technicolor. I say my affirmations and goals every single night. It's bloody hard to be a high performance person. Perfection equals paralysis. If you left it to engineers, no car would ever come off the assembly line. No car would ever come off the assembly line. And I've been in business with enough engineers, I, I can tell, attest to that with my hand on my heart. They, they'd still be trying to make it better. And the internet business is very much the same. The internet kids want to test and test and test. 
and they want the, the landing page to be this. And roll it out. The great thing about the internet is your, your results are instantaneous. If something that I'm overseeing at a Concord level, 60,000 feet, doesn't work in two days, forget about it, move on. And uh, today at our meeting, now the young kids are, uh, we ran it three days, uh, sir, and uh, we closed it down. And they are thinking I'm gonna ask why. I said, no, that's fine, next. Because without them making mistakes and without them being allowed to make the decision, they never get any better. And 95% of the time, I know probably better than they do, we're never gonna be able to know everything or have them know everything unless they make some mistakes and get comfortable with making mistakes. What gets measured gets accomplished. Without measurement, you're just fooling yourself. Before I had any money, I used to go to the Rolls Royce dealers and sit in the cars and smell the leather, touch the leather, okay? I went to million dollar houses and my wife and I would walk through the house and they'd say, when are your parents getting here, kids? No, we are the buyers. Uh, practice within when you're without. Practice being successful. How many people listening to this today practice being successful today? Through affirmations, through going to the Rolls Royce dealer, if it, maybe Lamborghini, maybe something else. Right. In my particular case, it was Rolls Royce. And within a year of me going to the Rolls Royce dealer, I had a Rolls, okay? Within 19 months of me dreaming and Adding it to my goals, a castle on an island, I own Guthrie Castle. 19 months. Okay. Go to stores you can't afford. Go um, hire lawyers you can't afford. Lawyers will meet with anybody. Accounts will meet with anybody. Go to the big four accountants uh, with a business idea. The first couple of meetings are for free. Jettison probably a lot of the people you'll hang around with. If you have if poor public speaking skills, Join Toastmasters. Do these. If you go, if you went to a good school and you're not successful, go to the alumni deals. Okay. Uh, I didn't go to a good school. I'm a perfect living example that a lot of trouble as a kid. Um, working class background. My parents uh, went to uh, uh, just a mediocre university that I flunked out of three times before I finally graduated with honors. But. Uh, and had no money to begin with, $820. So it's all, it's all possible. But I, you know, I devoted myself uh, to feeling successful. I was wearing suits like this before I could afford them. Uh, most people procrastinate because they're unsure, so just do it. And, uh, but I, I've never had a problem just doing it. Because one of the things is you learn as a young uh, combat, infantry officer is time costs lives uh, we overanalyze because we're unsure we're not overanalyze we don't overanalyze because we are not sure um, if it'll work or not we're more worried about on the emotional side it embarrassing us do not go where the path may lead go instead where there is no path and leave a trail I believe you can hear the siren call in your lives without it leading to you crashing against the rocks. And I think that's worth sharing. Not everything in Silicon Valley or any industry or life for that matter need be portrayed as home runs or strikeouts, success or failure. It's so ridiculous that it's portrayed that way, but it's what sells newspapers. So it's what you read about. You can have an idea that doesn't yield a better way to do your job or your career, but it changes your life. The most successful people I know are divorced and they tell me it wasn't worth it. Don't do it. Don't sacrifice your families. Hold your children up high as your greatest inventions because they are. I invented something that many of you use every day. You, you don't know it. It's buried in the enterprise, but I know it and I know how it feels. And I'll tell you, it doesn't compare to every day holding that one's happy and healthy little hand. And by the way, don't step on anyone's neck to advance your cause. Don't sue anyone and try not to get sued. You'll sleep better at night. My wife and I don't put work before our daughter or each other. The engineers in my company with similar families and I have been together for most of our careers. 
We don't waste time commuting to offices. We don't have each other over for dinner. We don't have holiday parties. We get it done, and then we see our families. We're like a less good-looking, legal, married with children version of the Ocean's Eleven team. We build good companies that great companies buy and take around the world as our path of least resistance to contributing to the world. Building smaller companies takes a lot less capital and therefore a lot less risk, and therefore a lot less of a personal toll. And this also works in other industries. My companies look a lot like Seth Rogen's movies. A strict budget, an acceptably sized audience, although much smaller than a blockbuster. You know what? He seems like a pretty happy guy, too. I agreed to join a nonprofit board, my primary school board, and it changed my life. I learned about parenting and education and philanthropy and what motivates people. Maybe you'll have an idea about attacking global warming, or maybe you'll have an idea about attacking poverty, or maybe you'll have an idea about attacking. Truth and news reporting, and maybe you'll do none of those things, but maybe you'll speak from your heart authentically in front of the person that you're going to marry, and maybe you'll be inspiring. I took the only path to see you along Tiburon Boulevard today, where even our most resourceful, most well-meaning people can't seem to get their acts together regarding changing their daily driving habits to affect traffic, and so it goes in our little town. And so it goes in most towns. How do we sacrifice a lot to save the planet if we can't even sacrifice a little? The Union of Concerned Scientists just forecasted that nearly 4,400 homes in Marin County alone are going to be completely underwater in less than 30 years due to sea level rise. So my generation, your generation, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to do something. For now, I keep searching for ideas, like taking our daughter to school on an electric tandem bicycle. We count the idling cars as we pass in traffic. We wave to them. They used to wave to us, but we're getting a little annoying now, so they kind of just, eh. But it's something. It's it's something that we can do. In an increasingly unrecognizable world, my career trajectory should be recognizable to you. This means you can do what I've done. You can have this life. You can be happy in your career and your family. And if you want the world to know your name, well, then I applaud you. I really do. The world needs you, and I'll wish you every success. If you're willing to sacrifice it all, bet it all, blow out the curve, just remember my name as your backup plan. There are key components and key ingredients in the recipe of a student mentality. Number one, you need to be disciplined. The future is very expensive, and only those who are carriers of discipline can inherit the future. I need you to stay motivated. I don't care if you have to listen to me a thousand times. I need you to stay motivated, and I need that motivation to mature into discipline. I need you to be self-aware. So I need you to remember that you are always learning. In life, you are always learning. And I need you to believe in yourself. I need you to see yourself capable, lovable, and unconditionally worthy of your future. Turn your pain into progress. I need you to see yourself. See yourself. One of the things that many students lack is vision. You got to see yourself before you get there. You have to hear yourself telling yourself thank you. I need you to open up your ears. Open up your ears, because the you from the future is telling you thank you. Thank you for not giving up when you wanted to give up. Thank you for not being depressed. Thank you for not allowing the brokenness to eat your progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got this. It's going to get hard sometimes. I'm telling you right now. It's not going to be easy, but it's worth it. Maybe you're listening to me right now. You want to lose weight, or you you try to pass the final exam, or maybe there's just this feat that seems as though 
It is impossible. Turn your pain into progress. Turn your pain into progress. I need you to be uncomfortable with average. I need you to be allergic to average. I need you to come to the end of yourself. So many people are depending on you. A student is hardworking. A student is mentally tough. Have the ability to adapt. Have a character, consistency. Demonstrate courage on the daily. Stay motivated, stay positive. Earn your respect. Have a winning attitude. Breathe, compete, make no excuses. Set goals, practice great habits. Stay focused. You want your future? You gotta outwork everybody on that field. You gotta outwork everybody in the room. You gotta learn how to perform under pressure. You gotta leave it all out on the field. <laughs> everybody wants the future, but everybody wants to be average. There are gonna be times when you feel like you're losing your mind and you study for hours and you're gonna take an exam and you will not pass. A student is resilient. A student is discipline. A student is committed. A student is consistent even when they don't want to be. Because the cycle of depression needs to end with you. The cycle of not enough needs to end with you. The lack and the dysfunction and the anxiety and all of these things that your family and your father and your mother have gone through. You have to keep a student mentality. I studied and I failed the exam. I studied and I failed the test. And life is an uphill war and it is filled with tests and exams and critical moments where you are going to have to dig deep inside of yourself and ask yourself why? Why did you start in the first place? And what was the emotion, the feeling, what was the science and the psychology behind the decision that you made? And nine times out of ten, I can tell you why you started. You started because you were hungry. Hunger is the feeling of discomfort or weakness caused by a lack of food coupled with a desire to eat. How hungry are you? When you feel like throwing in the towel, when you feel like surrendering everything you work for, remember why you started. Remember how you felt when you started. You were hungry. When you want to let go, when you want to surrender, when you want to stop, when you are ready to quit, when you have failed and failed again. Let me remind you what got you here. Hunger got you here. A strong desire got you here. You were desperate to break curses in your family. You were desperate to break the cycle of poverty and depression. You were desperate. Hunger got you here. Well, and if we all got our act together collectively and stop making things worse, because that's another thing people do all the time, not only do they not do what they should to make things better, they actively attempt to make things worse because they're spiteful or resentful or arrogant or deceitful or, or homicidal or genocidal or all of those things all bundled together in an absolutely pathological package. If people stopped really, really trying just to make things worse, we have no idea how much better they would get just because of that. So there's this weird dynamic that's part of the existential system of ideas between human vulnerability, social judgment, both of which are, 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 are major causes of suffering, and the failure of individuals to adopt the responsibility that they know they should adopt. It isn't merely that your fate depends on whether or not you get your act together and to what degree you decide that you're going to live out your own genuine being. It isn't only your fate. It's the fate of everyone that you're networked with. And so, you know, you think, well, there's 9 billion, 7 billion people in the world. We're going to peak at about 9 billion, by the way, and then it'll decline rapidly. But 7 billion people in the world, and who are you? You're just one little dust moat among that 7 billion. And so it really doesn't matter what you do or don't do, but that's simply not the case. It's the wrong model because you're at the center of a network. You're a node in a network. 
Of course, that's even more true now that we have social media. You'll, you know, you'll know a thousand people at least over the course of your life. And they'll know a thousand people each. And that puts you one person away from a million and two persons away from a billion. And so that's how you're connected. And the things you do, they're like dropping a stone in a pond. The ripples move outward and they affect things in ways that you can't fully comprehend. And it means that the things that you do and that you don't do are far more important than you think. And so if you act that way, of course, the terror of realizing that is that it actually starts to matter what you do. And you might say, well, that's better than living a meaningless existence. It's better for it to matter. But I mean, if you really ask yourself, would you be so sure if you had the choice? I can live with no responsibility whatsoever. The price I pay is that nothing matters. Or I can reverse it and everything matters. But I have to take the responsibility that's associated with that. It's not so obvious to me that people would take the meaningful path. You now when you say, well, nihilists suffer dreadfully because there's no meaning in their life and they still suffer. Yeah, but the advantage is they have no responsibility. So that's the payoff. And I actually think that's the motivation. Say, well, I can't help being nihilistic. All my belief systems have collapsed. It's like, yeah, maybe. Maybe you've just allowed them to collapse because it's a hell of a lot easier than acting them out. And the price you pay is some meaningless suffering, but you can always whine about that and people will feel sorry for you. And you have the option of taking the pathway of the martyr. So that's a pretty good deal, all things considered, especially when the, when the alternative is to bear your burden properly and to live forthrightly in the world. Well, what Solzhenitsyn figured out, and so many people in the 20th century, it's not just him, even though he's the best example, is that if you live a pathological life, you pathologize your society. And if enough people do that, then it's hell. Really, really. And you can read the Gulag Archipelago if you have the fortitude to do that, and you'll see exactly what hell is like. And then you can decide if that's a place you'd like to visit, or even more importantly, if it's a, light, if it's a place you'd like to visit and take all your family and friends, because that's what happened in the 20th century. No one can live without a routine. You just forget that. If you guys don't have a routine, I would recommend, like, you get one going because you cannot be mentally healthy without a routine. You need to pick a time to get up. Whatever time you want, but pick one and stick to it because otherwise you dysregulate your circadian rhythms and they regulate your mood. The rigors of academic life can be brutal. Long days of classes, long nights of studying, and low cash flow requires you to be frugal. Projects, case studies, pop quizzes, and final exams will test your morals and your scruples. But you keep pushing and pushing because you know one day all of that hard work and studying will pay off and be fruitful. You've seen many others succumb to academic demise and wind up with the wrong letter on their transcript. The dreaded W, which painfully stands for withdrawal. But that's where you draw the line because you made a vow to choose incline over decline. Fast forward over rewind, redesign over recline, and hard grind over pout and wine. You made the choice to dig deep within. And thus the only W you will ever get will be the W that stands for win. Because winners like you pick themselves up when they stumble and slip. Winners like you understand that it's impossible to never trip. Winners like you are strong enough to say no when their friends want them to take a sip. Winners like you trust the process so steps they never ever try and skip. And that chip on your shoulder it remains to remind you of all the doubters, naysayers, and haters that said you would never walk across that stage and receive that paper. But more fuel for your fire just makes success so much greater. Because you're overcoming the sour taste of now to get to the sweet taste of later. You adjust to all the different personalities of your teachers and professors and enjoy those that are super cool but stay mentally prepared for those that are stressors. Blessings seem to find you because the universe conspires to make sure everything falls into place 
because you've got so much heart, passion, and desire. Your fire keeps burning, but at times it starts to fizzle. But you remember you owe it to your future self, and that gas turns that fizzle into a sizzle. You want to leave a legacy and contribute to the greater good. So for now, it's the uncomfortable, discipline, and sacrifice. Because to cash out in the future means today you got to pay the price. So that means when your friends ask, can you go? Your heart wants to say yes, but your willpower says no. Because Mr. Jones Thermochemistry 3202 ain't no joke. And so you got to be locked in and stay woke because he's all about business and doesn't give any rope. So if you miss any assignments or fail any test, you have very little hope of passing his class. But you will pass his class and you will pass it with flying colors because you, my friend, are an academic hustler. And thus you put in the time, the effort, and ask all the right questions to make sure all of your bases are covered. The vultures will hate. You tried to give them vision, but they never put on the right frames. And thus their sight was blurry, and their gray reflected it. And now they want to throw shade at you, but your shield deflected it. You tell them winning in progress over here, so please eliminate the negative vibe. It's time to remove them from your circle and find yourself a positive tribe. Because misery loves company. But that misery cannot have any of your companionship because everybody on your team is working as a unit to come back and win the championship. You owe it to your future self to make money moves in and out of the classroom because time waits for no one. And whether you succeed or fail, it will pass soon. So respect your personal brand and make sure your daily advertisement represents who you want to be. Walk with character and integrity so your reflection in the mirror is who you want to see. Your future self is counting on your current self to set the tone and make sure your future is not only bright, but powerful and strong for mediocrity. Your future self is counting on your current self to never take shortcuts and never lack integrity because the day will come for you to walk with character and have clarity. Greatness is your destiny, but at times you must reboot your mental computer because every step you take today will directly affect your future. Your future self is counting on your current self to give every ounce of your being, every ounce of your soul, to make sure you tap into your gift. This is a great day to win. So I talk about how we fear the wrong things. So most of us are fearful of how our friends are reacting, what's happening on social media, and what's the random bit of news that we heard. None of it is fact-based. That's one of the biggest issues it's that worry we have. Based. It's worry-based. And it's also imagination-based. So we become fiction writers. We've all watched too many movies. Now we start writing the scary movies yes. in our head of what may happen. So our imagination, and Seneca said it best, we suffer twice. One in reality and one in imagination. Mm. You can look at the news right now and you can get scared straight away and get in complete freeze mode, feeling stuck, paralyzed, whatever it is, because what you're now doing is you're creating a story of what's going to happen. And that story, again, can be used positively. So your story may actually be true, but if it's gonna be true, now you can prepare. And that shifts you away from being scared because now you're preparing. Yes. And so the real You can be answer, confident because you prepared. Exactly. And so we should be shifting our fear energy into preparation energy. Because what fear does is it keeps you locked there, mm. right? We just feel stuck. The thing is to get really close to that fear. So what we usually do is it. embrace it, get close to it, get intimate with it. Yeah. We run away from fear. We like to run away and go, oh, it's not coming with me. And Or what we do is we hear one thing 
and we define the whole understanding of our fear based on that one thing. Yes. So it's like someone, and I'll give you a normal example in a normal life scenario. Yes. Someone says to you in the office, you know that, you know that they're going to cut a few people. And you don't even check. You don't even know. Real, and now it? you just made it real and now you're running with it and you're trying to run away from it. So you're trying to avoid conversations with your boss. You're trying to avoid any conflict. You're trying to, you know, you're just, you're just, you're just trying to avoid it. And so actually what you need to do is go, okay, let me actually discover that fear. Let me go intimate with that fear. Let me ask myself, where's that fear coming from? What am I really scared of? What am I really scared of? Am I really scared of losing my job? Am I scared of not having any money? What am I really scared of? And when you get to the root, and I call it the why ladder in the book. Mm -hmm. So it's asking yeah. yourself, what am I scared of? And then go, why am I scared of this? Why am I scared of this? Why am I scared of this? And when you can't ask why any longer, you've got to the answer and that's what you have to deal with. Most of us are not dealing with what we're actually scared of. I believe self-doubt is the killer of dreams. And I believe that, and you have this amazing graph in here. It's about ego versus self-esteem. How do we build self-belief, self-esteem, self-confidence while also not allowing our ego to be so big and think we can just do anything? How do we balance ego and self-confidence so they don't hurt each other? Yeah, absolutely. And, and what we experience most of the time is extremes. Yes. So the two extremes that most of us experience are either I have to think I'm the best, yes. I'm the best in the world, I can, do anything. I can crush anyone, <laughs> like I'm like gonna show everyone what I'm like. <laughs> Or most of us experience the other extreme, which is I'm the worst. Mm. I'm the stupidest, I'm the dumbest, I'm the most worthless, I'm the biggest loser. Notice how that's both ego. Mm, the really? Ego, yes. Why is the negative So ego? the ego wants to be the best of the best, or the ego wants to be the worst of the worst. The ego won't accept being in the middle. Real confidence comes from knowing your strengths and going all in on them. Your confidence does not come from just standing up the right way or just saying the right stuff to yourself. Body like, language only. Yeah, that's, yeah, and that's important. I, I'm, I'm a big believer in all of that, but what I'm saying is that that doesn't build real confidence. Yeah. Real confidence comes from thinking, I'm really good at this, I know I can do this, and I love doing it. And, it, and really, this is the most important bit. Confidence comes from serving other people. Mm -hmm. When you see the impact you have on others, and this is the biggest issue, the reason why we have such low self-esteem today in the world is because people are not serving others. Why, why is that? Like, why are we still focused on self as opposed to service? It's conditioned. It's conditioned, right? I've, I've said this before that we're wired for generosity, but we're educated for greed. As we get older, we're told there are finite numbers of how many kids get made on the basketball or baseball team. Yes. We're told there's we're a limited. finite number of college spaces. We're told there's a finite number of how many tickets there are. We're told there's a finite number of people that are successful. Guess what? In the theater of happiness, there are infinite and unlimited seats. There is a seat with your name on it in the theater of dreams, in wow. the theater of happiness, but you think that because you think that there are only a hundred people allowed in, that if someone else makes it before you, that you don't get in. And guess what? Is there a cap on how many billionaires there are in the world? No. No. Is there a cap on how many millionaires there are in the world? No. no. Is there a cap on how many happy people there are in the world? No. no. And that's why I really am encouraging Forbes. I want Forbes, forget printing a rich list, happiness print a happy list, list. Wow. print a service list, print wow. a list of who is serving. We should serving, do that. We should do who that. Who is serving the most in the world. Wow. Right? That'll, be, that'll be competition Ta based. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> I gave more than you yeah, gave. And that's why it should be service based on time, energy, and money. Uh -huh. Because we should start showing how much time people give, how much energy people give. Mother Teresa, I don't think she gave any money to her charities. Right. But she gave a lot of time and energy. Yeah. You know, you look at all the people who made a change in the world, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, like they may not have given a lot of money to stuff. Yeah, they you, gave time and energy. You don't have to give resources, but your resourcefulness, your love, your time, love that. your focus, your attention, your compassion. Love that. Uh, you know, yeah. resourcefulness of the, of the heart, not of the wallet, I think is love key. Love that. And you don't need to have a lot of money to make a big impact. I want you to think of just one person in this very moment that went through a traumatic life altering experience and it left them psychologically handicapped or even physically handicapped. And I want you to start thinking about the pain. I want you to think about the diminished expectations, the psychological torture 
the testing of the limitations of the soul. I want you to think about what this person has gone through. And I want you to think about how you were there for them. How you were compassionate, how you had empathy and you had understanding. But more than that, you felt a responsibility to come to their aid, to provide a sense of comfort and refuge. And now I want you to think to yourself, when was the last time you did this for you? When you have fallen, when you have made a mistake, the worst thing you can do is criticize yourself. At the end of the day, life can be very painful. We can experience loss and worry and the insomnia of reoccurring heartbreak and hardships. It is inevitable. It is self-compassion that gives us the power to face our failures, to face our fears, to face our insecurities, to face what we don't like about ourselves and come out on top. Denial is another form of resistance. And only those who are self-compassionate can deal with the problem. There's a lot of people walking around today, they have unchecked rage, unchecked aggression, unchecked anxiety, fear, insecurity. You're gonna to have to care enough about yourself to face it and find a resolve. Cure what is curable, prevent what is preventable, and go on about your day. When was the last time you showed yourself a little compassion, a little empathy, this is not an invitation to become self-absorbed, but rather a thought that I want to bring to your attention. Remember the past, but do not live in the past. Every mistake you have made up until this very moment, forgive yourself. With forgiveness comes freedom. And when you are free, you are empowered, you are positioned to fight for your future. If you are going to win the fight for your future, then you are going to have to master self-compassion. I don't think we really understand the power of self-compassion. We all understand that compassion is a characteristic and a distinctive that, that really causes us to recognize the urgency to assist when someone is in need, compassion motivates us to get involved. When we see somebody that is facing adversity, conflict, hardship, it, it makes us sensitive to what others are going through. This is what compassion does. It, it makes us care at such a profound level that we are filled with an overwhelming desire to make a difference. I mean, this is the power of compassion. Compassion is one of the bridges to the future. Compassion is a part of the recipe for breakthrough. If you want to experience breakthrough relationally, socially, even politically, you're going to need compassion. We know this. Compassion makes us accept responsibility that we never thought we could handle. Compassion makes us better people than we could have ever dreamed we'd be. Uh, it makes us exist at our highest level. Compassion causes us to get creative on behalf of others. When they are facing giants, when they are facing adversity, this is what compassion does. And I'm gonna tell you this, it's easy to be compassionate on others. It's easy to believe for others. It's easy to pump somebody else up. It's easy to listen to a motivational video that says, be great, work harder, don't give up, you can do it. Wake up early, go to bed late. You know, remember your why. Never sleep in. Greatness is upon you. Do your best. You know, it's easy for us to listen to this, but there's a disconnect with, with receiving the information and then applying the information. So our application muscle is off. And the reason why it's off is because the self-compassion is non-existent. Or it's so low that we are only motivated for a week or a day or a moment, but if you want the future, if you want to win the fight for the future, if you want it all, if you want to fulfill destiny, then you're going to need self-compassion. 
You gotta treat yourself with the exact same kindness, care, and concern that you have for your best friend. Take a moment to think about how you respond to disappointment. Do you hold it in? Do you panic? Are you consumed with feelings of anxiety or hopelessness? Or does a single disappointment throw your entire day off? So there's nothing wrong with setting the bar high, but it is time to review your response to disappointment if your expectations cause you to sink into a state of anxiety. On the surface, seeking perfection seems like a great quality, but at the root of perfectionism is fear. Fear of failure, fear of making a mistake, fear of being laughed at, fear of people finding out that you don't really have it all together. But nobody has it all together. We all have strengths and weaknesses. Yes, there will be times when you give your all and still fail to achieve the result that you expected. But don't panic. Every challenge is an opportunity for you to see just how strong and resilient you really are. You should never view your challenges as a disadvantage. Instead, it's important for you to understand that your experience facing and overcoming adversity is actually one of your biggest advantages. How strong is your why? It's not enough for you to just say, I want to do well. You have to believe that you will do well and you have to pursue it. You have to keep going when you run into challenges or tough times. Those who succeed are not fearless. They had to show up even when they were afraid. At some point, they probably felt like they were at the end of their rope. But guess what? They recognized that it's okay to rest. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to take some time to pull your thoughts together but it's not okay to quit. A past failure does not determine your future outcome. No, you can't go back and change what has already happened, but you do have the power to create an amazing future. So as you continue to press towards your goals, never allow your disappointments to discourage you. Let them fuel you. Success isn't about how your life looks to others. It's about how it feels to you. We realize that being successful isn't about being impressive. It's about being inspired. And that's what it means to be your true self. Because I always wanted everything to be perfect, it was difficult for me to be happy. It was always, I will be happy when I land the job that I want, or I will be happy when I get this 4.0 that I'm striving for. But even when I achieved the goal that I had been working towards, there was always another goal that I needed to achieve before I could truly be happy. In the end, people can only define you if you let them. In the end, it's up to each of us to define ourselves. It's up to each of us to invent our own future with the choices we make and the actions we take. In retrospect, I didn't give myself room to be imperfect. It was all or nothing, good or bad. Don't get me wrong. Being ambitious and wanting to do well is a great trait. It's a great quality. But I do want you to understand that all you can give is your best. <laughs>